Hey! Okay, so it's been a while. I've just really been, uh, of course, as always, going through a lot, trying to really figure out what I'm doing and how I'm going to fix things and all of that. Um, I posted it on my Instagram, but I actually finally put in my notice at work. That was very... Um, fulfilling and it was also nerve-wracking because I honestly did not have any backup plan <laughs> and that craziest part is that is totally not me I have to have a plan all the time and <clears throat> I just I, I can't believe that I did it and so but I'm I kind of was in a funk you know all week um, I've been off for a couple of days now um, from work just because it was back to school and getting my kids back into the routine of going back to school. Um, I put this in months ago not really knowing I was going to um, potentially be jobless. <clears throat> so anyways, it's kind of just like a good um, start into what is going to be my routine. So it all worked out well. Um, I have had a couple of interviews, and they look very promising, and that's really nice. I'm very excited about that. Um, it's been pretty, it's, the process has been pretty quick, which I'm very surprised about, so I'm sure it was probably, like, all, like, meant to be and all those kinds of things, so that's pretty cool. Um, and one of the interviews I really wanted to talk about, because I've had an interview in the past, and... So, short, for short, when it comes to my resume, I have a broad range of jobs um, because, of course, I was veterinary technician and assistant um, and receptionist in the veterinary clinic. I was in the veterinary clinic for a very long time. Um, then I was in marketing and um, also did a lot of brand ambassador work. <clears throat> And then I went to um, doing hearing aids, like, you know, hearing testing, fitting um, patients with hearing aids, all of those things. I did, you know, I did my state exam, all of that stuff. And that was brutal. I went through, I went through essentially hell with that because I'm not, uh, I can't easily pick up things. I'm not a quick learner, I guess you should say, and especially when it comes to reading material that um, is not explained to me and I have to figure it out myself is very, very challenging. And so I've had to be very self-motivated when it came to that and that really um, affected me and it taught me a lot of patience and taught me how to really be more disciplined when it came to studying and, you know, teaching myself things and re actually really knowing that I can't rely on anybody to make it right but myself. So that was really um, very, very challenging and it taught me a lot. And so I've had a couple of interviews before where it's like, okay, you have all these things on your resume, like what is your, what is your outlook? Like what are you, what, what are you trying to do? You know, what is your like that thing it's like what is your five-year plan I'm like to fucking survive um you know so when it comes to that I it made me that interview made me feel very insecure and it really made me think like shit okay so what am I doing what what is my five-year plan and so when it came down to it, like that job and the feelings I got whenever I interviewed for that job and it sounded, you know, you know, very promising, but it didn't work out. But I was so happy and I almost cried because that was the job position that I wanted for a very long time since I started marketing and brand ambassador work. Um, and so I was very, very, very happy. Like I was excited. My blood pressure kind of raised up a little bit because I was excited. And I, that feeling I got was, was a feeling that I've not had about a job in a very long time. Um, I last, I had that feeling is when I started veterinary and, 
that was that, that was nice. It was really nice to have that feeling again. And uh, ultimately, it came down to I wasn't chosen because it just seemed like I didn't really know what I wanted. And um, <clears throat> I had this interview recently, and they were saying essentially that they liked that I had all these different types of um, jobs because they were, you know, pretty, pretty much like um, a, a broad range, and I was put in very many different type of situations. And she told me she was like, "It's pretty exciting," and I was like. Oh, I'm so glad because a lot of in my head I'm like not a lot of people think so. People think I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing, and for the most part I don't. And who the fuck does? Like, ugh. anyways. And so then I was like, oh, uh, thank you. You know, I I feel like you know those jobs have really been a milestone to who I am and what things I'm able to handle and. Uh, work through and things like that like veterinary taught me how to be very compassionate and also to be patient and as well as how to communicate with individuals in all different types of uh, situations and emotional situations and that was nice and I did a lot of education especially on um, pet nutrition and uh, pet preventative care all of those things and I really enjoy doing that and I, I enjoy teaching people things and you know, of course, when it's like coachable people, and I, I was really good at what I did. I, you know, I, I helped train people, and I was a manager at one point. It was, it was great, and I had really good relationship with our doctors, and it was nice. It was really, really nice. I, I enjoyed that job very much. I left that job because, of course, it, it's not the greatest in pay. Um, when it comes to somebody who isn't, you know, licensed, because I was never licensed. And, well, I also didn't really want to work in the veterinary clinic in my 30s, um, because I wanted to make sure that I took care of my body. Um, I've seen, you know, some of the um, elder technicians, you know, kind of struggling and um, with you know, with their body, their back, and all of those things, and that is, that does happen, because, you know, if you're picking up that 100 pound, you know, Great Dane, you know, dead weight helping to put it on the, the surgery table, that's kind of hard, or wrestling the 80 pound, you know, lab, or German Shepherd be, to get blood, and, you know, those kinds of things, that really takes a toll on your body, and so I, I really didn't want to, to do that in my 30s. I wanted to take care of myself and really have, you know, a good, meaningful life. And also, you know, have a job to where um, I can support myself. And because that was actually the time that I was going through my separation and my divorce and things at the end. And I was like, okay, I can't support my family on just the salary alone, so I need to do other things. And that's how I ventured into promotions and marketing. And that was a really good supplement that helped me get by. Even though I'm very reserved and... Um, kind of, I guess, like, like an introvert. Um, it was very strange for me to be out talking to people, but I really liked the aspect of educating people, which is very strange. Um, whenever, it, initially when I first started, if it was whatever product I was with, I would definitely make sure I educated somebody on that product. Uh, not necessarily, yeah, sales was a part of it, um, but I really talked a lot more about the product to give the story, because every product has a story, and what it took for that individual to make that product or um, what type of, you know, uh, scope that they are actually using, you know, what, like, what is their purpose for making this product or whatever that may be. And so then I, I learned what that was mainly like public speaking and that was very strange, and I did a lot of events. I loved events. Those were fun. Met a lot of people, even though I was very nervous all the time. Like, I would have, like, 
baby panic attacks in my car before because I was like, oh my God, why do I do these things? Why do I put myself through these situations? And I'd really have to give myself a really like five minute pep talk. And then I was like, okay, fuck it, let's go. Let's get this shit done. And I got it done and it was great. I, I was professional and educated people and, you know, dealt with a bunch of drunk people. And uh, that was, you know, pretty interesting, of course. And so then also like doing a bunch of business to business. And that was kind of interesting and going to different, you know, businesses and especially those industrial businesses. I mean, those industrial people are on a different type of level. I mean, they're, they're pretty strict and they just don't really take nobody's bullshit. And that kind of is intimidating to me. Um, but I completely get it. And that's how they should be, especially in that industry. So, and then hearing a lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about the, the thing that I was marketing and so forth like that. I can't say who that was. Um, but you know, just doing all those things and hearing a lot of negative remarks and having to really be um, an advocate and really try to help that uh, consumer and that business owner to really change their mind on that um, individual business and to continue to do business with them and know all the changes and all of those things. So that was really nice to, to really learn how to do that, to really... Um, you know, like talent acquisition and, you know, all that stuff, like, and also just the education and um, business relations and building relations and, you know, re retention and all of those things, like, I've learned all those things. Um, so, and now with working in the hearing industry, that's a whole different level, like, of course, like the testing, the patient care, the patient monitoring, you know, patient education, you know, the fittings, making sure the fittings are correct to their loss, making sure that you're, um, you know, transitioning the patient to new hearing, you know, who's haven't heard in like 20 plus years. And really, the especially the patients who are in denial, having to really turn those into a positive, like, having so many negative people or so many negative impacts and having to really turn them into something positive has really been a lot. And it takes a lot to really, really do that. And I think that when it came to that particular interview, I uh, wasn't really prepared on how to um, explain the things that I do because I haven't really broke them down into pieces. Um, when it came to that job that I really, really wanted and that I've wanted for a very long time. And, you know, they took it as I didn't know what I was doing. But now when I've had this interview, she was like, yeah, I'm excited to hear. And I, when I told her those things and what they've actually helped me do, she was like, it seems like each job, each step that you've taken, even though that they have not been what you thought, or where you, you know, kind of planted, you know, your, your, your seeds and grown, she's like, but it, you have grown, and it's been a lot more of your, it's like your stepping stones to get where you are today, and to hear her say that, I was like, you're right, like, thank you so much for that, like, that made me, like, very happy and very secure of, of, more secure of what I've been doing this whole time when I thought I was just doing nothing and essentially I I have been doing a lot I've I've been helping people along the way and educating people along the way and overcoming every obstacle that's been thrown at me and so it's quite quite interesting to see like I, I can't believe like I've never saw it in the beginning and you know most of the time like they say you don't really know like what you're doing until you really talk about it and somebody you know who is very strong-minded and you know and and knows about you know the struggles in life that can really tell you like no wait a minute like you are doing great like these are the things that you are doing and so and at work you know they tell me that I've grown I've grown you know I'm like, okay, I can hear that all day, but if you're not telling me where I'm growing or where you think I've actually grown, like, that doesn't mean shit to me. Like, I want to know, like, every every bullet point of what you think I'm growing at, 
and what I've definitely have um, evolved into. But if you can't give me that, that's just a fucking word. It doesn't mean shit to me. And so with her telling me that, she's like, I was, I was very happy and, and it, I felt heard. Isn't that stupid? It's like, I felt that I was heard. And I, I appreciated it very, very much. And it's kind of crazy to see when you know you are talking to good people and the people that you work with versus the people that you talk to that are new are just like, what the fuck have I been doing this whole time, you know? And so I, I'm trying to come in terms with that, but that's okay. That is okay. Like I'm, I've been feeling very down. Like I went through all of this and worked my ass off and spent a lot of money and I given up. And even though I may give up on that particular um, pos- er, position, or I don't know, I don't know if I'll go back to that maybe six months, a year from now, I guess we'll see what happens. But I do know that I don't want to see it as giving up. I'm just seeing it as I, I am outgrowing that particular, even if it's that particular company, um, or particular location, and because I've never been heard, I was essentially just told I need to do, if I wanted to make more money, I need to make more sales, and which was a little bit different in the situation that I was in and in the agreements that I have with the individual that I work with. And I'm not, you know, putting any shade or anything. I just really being real on what was actually happening, and I... I essentially, I, f- I felt exploited and I, I didn't like that and I just wanted to get out of there because I felt like no matter what I did, it wasn't going to be enough. So I was like, okay, I'd rather just go somewhere else. Um, so I really think that I've just outgrown it. I've I've realized today that I outgrow pretty much everything all the time. And I have come to terms with that. I don't know if I'll be that person to have a job or I'll retire from. I think I'll be that person that has had like 10,000 different jobs. Maybe, of course, not exactly, but, um, but I think that I would have had an interesting life and that I didn't give up and that even though I outgrow things and restart things and all of that, that I came out on top. I don't know if I'll come out on top, essentially, but I come out really more enlightened and a different person a grateful person that's for sure I'm very I'm very grateful for what I've been able to do and the people and patients I've had and been able to to help and educate and all of those things and the people who I haven't been able to help that's okay too because I mean it's just not their time or they're just not ready and I'm okay with that And because I know whenever I'm not ready for things, I don't want to be pushed into situations either. So I respect that of everybody who, you know, walks in my my office or that is in events and things like that. So it's okay. So overall, right now, I am still in search for a new a new job. Um and I'm sure something will come up. What is it going to be? I have no fucking clue. And I'm doing a lot of soul searching right now and what it is that I think I need to do. And if it's, I'm also trying to 
really grasp the idea that if it's not what I'm going to do permanently, that's okay too. And take it as there is a reason that I am there and that is just a part of me needing to grow to get to where I actually really am supposed to be. And I think I always knew that later in life was when I was going to really see the fruits of my labor. And that is exactly what's happening. And I am grateful to be able to acknowledge that. So anyways, I don't want to keep y'all too long. And hopefully this... I don't know what this does to anybody, but if you feel like you're not getting anywhere or in a career, just know that it's okay. I know that we were told that you're supposed to have one job for your whole life, but that's not it. You can't sit where you're outgrowing and not really, you're being stagnant. You can't do that. That's like, think. I then I had to think about like treating it like a relationship. Like, you're not going to be with or be married or be in a relationship with somebody who is essentially not hearing you, is avoiding you and neglecting you and not helping you the way that you should be or supporting you in the way that you should be. So why why work at a job like that also? That doesn't make any sense. If you can drop that guy like, like a fly, drop the job. So... That's just where I'm at with that. So anyways, I'll keep you guys updated and see what happens. And yeah, okay, bye.